right, so before we jump into the Q&A portion of today's webinar, um, I've got just a few reminders I want to go over with everyone. The first is our EPV reports that are brand new to this school year. Um, those EOI validation reports that we put in place, you're, you know that we have EPV1, which was the preliminary EPV collection, and then a final EPV. We've found out that there's some logic issues with EPV2, um, so we've requested that PowerSchool remove that collection. Um, we've already had some tickets coming in wanting us to unlock EPV1 since those were reliable reports, and we've put that request into PowerSchool. That should be done by Thursday, so you will be able to run EPV1 through June 30th and just ignore EPV2 for this school year. I also want to remind you that even though you're running these EPV reports, you're still going to have to go through the EOI validation process, which are going to, that process will return any last minute errors that have been, uh, maybe records that have been modified or new records that have been put in since you last ran the EPV1. So just remember on the day of, you're still going to have to go through and run your EOI validation process. And there's a screenshot there at the bottom of this slide that shows you the navigation. All right, so the EOI schedule for this year, it looks pretty much the same as it does every year. We're going to start, we're going to take the systems down at 5 p.m. on June 30th. Uh, all users in the state will be locked out. That's when the overnight processes will start. And then hopefully by the morning of July 1st, we're going to be good to go. Um, all of the EOI contacts will be able to gain access that morning. Speaking of EOI contacts, I'd like to remind everybody if there has been changes since you submitted that page, if somebody's left, if your phone number's changed, if there's been any changes to the EOI contacts since you submitted that, please go and make those changes now because we are going to collect that final data on Monday morning and submit that to PowerSchool. So after Monday, whoever we submit in that file from the EOI contacts page will be the ones that we're going to be relying on on the morning of July 1st. At 7 a.m. on July 1st, the EOI webinar will begin, and I know that nobody's got that invitation yet, but please be on the lookout. PowerSchool Support is actually hosting this webinar, so they will be sending out the uh, registration information. But again, 7 a.m. that morning is when we're going to kick off uh, the webinar. Um, I, I ask that you please be available by 7 a.m., only because... Uh, the quicker we can get started, the quicker we can end that day. And a lot of the bigger districts are going to take well into the night to process. So the sooner you're on that call, the sooner we'll be finished up and in better shape. Down at the bottom, you'll notice I noted that DPI and PowerSchool hope to have all systems returned to you by July 5th. We're going to shoot for July 4th, but at the latest, July 5th. So you're going to get it back a little sooner than you have in the past, mainly because we realize there's summer school going on and you guys need access to the instances. All right, on our next slide, I just put in a little reminder of how to check the status of your EOI progress. Um, I do want to share, we've noticed over the last few years, especially for the larger districts, when you actually go to run your EOI, the status page, you know, it flows through the students, processing one through a thousand, processing a thousand through one through two thousand. It goes through that step by step, but for the larger districts that have a lot of students or a lot of standards to sync, it does get froze up and that page never moves on. It never shows more progress. So if that's the case, I wanted to tell you guys that you can monitor this from the system logs. And I put a link there to page 22 of the EOY guide. That'll tell you how to get to the system logs if you're unfamiliar with the system logs. But in my screenshot here, um, once you get to the system logs and you run the current log, you can search for that text end of year hyphenated. And it'll only return what I'm about to display on the next slide, which is all of the end of year tasks. <clears throat> and notice the ones I've highlighted in red there. Those are the ones you're going to be looking for. So the first one, end of year prog or promotion and enrollment complete. That means it's went through all of the students and it's promoted all of the kiddos to the next year. But it still goes on and then 
You see down those last two boxes, end of year sinking of standards, the finishing of sinking of standards. If your district uses standards, please note that even though the students have been promoted, it's still backing up and sinking all these standards, copying those over to the next year. So from the system logs, once you see that last line there, end of year process complete, that's when you know you're done. Now, if you don't want to sit around and watch that, just know that we do have staff that's going to monitor that as well. And on our little checkerboard that will be displayed on the webinar, just like we had last year, this is what we're searching for. And so we, we'll color your little box in once we see it's complete. But if you don't want to wait on us to check it for you, this is how you can be assured that your end of your process has completed. Yeah, so I can take this one. Um, so we wanted to give you guys this this summary slide of how other home base applications will be affected by EOI this year. Um, so up first, Canvas and Go Open and See both will really not be affected by PowerSchool EOI. Um, for Canvas, your Canvas admin will have already paused the sync. Um, Canvas won't start getting new courses for 21-22 until your district or PSU resumes their PowerSchool sync in Canvas. Um, but that is between you and Canvas to, to set those dates. Um, as far as SchoolNet, SchoolNet will remain available for staff only um, throughout PowerSchool EOI. Um, the last roster sync for 21-22 or for 2021 will be on June 29th at 8 p.m. SchoolNet will be down for the 23.0 upgrade from July 9th through the 11th at the latest. And then we will start with the 21-22 roster syncs to SchoolNet on July 12th or earlier if they finish the upgrade early. Um, and we will disable student workspaces as we always do until early August so that students can't jump in there and preview their schedules. Um, Learning.com will remain available for those of you who are currently contracted. Um, of course, it won't be getting those updated rosters, but it will be available. Um, and then we have some NISIS information on the next slide. Cami, I don't know if you want to jump in or you just want me to run through it, but. I can. <laughs> so NISIS end of year is going to happen on June 30th, um, 2021, after close of business around 5 p.m. At 5 p.m., I am going to be running the reports needed by DPI. And then once I've completed those reports and verified they're good, we'll notify the vendor to go ahead and archive plans. So we're asking all districts to be done with their evaluation and professional development plans in the online tool prior to June 29th, 2021. Uh, this will give us time just to make sure everything's clean on the 30th so that we can run reports um, after the close of business. Uh, our NISA's tool does not like go down. So if people are working in courses during the archival process, that's fine. They can still continue to work in professional development courses and may continue to access NISA's to work and complete those. And then we hope to have um, plans for the 2021-2022 um, targeted for you to set your plan types in NISIS by July 8th. I do have to post test all those plans again. Uh, just make sure all the processes stayed in or as we saw them pre EOI. Uh, but we hope to have it up by July 8th earlier if we can. Uh, do watch for a communication from me about that. And then if you need more information about what to do for NISIS, there's a link to the um, bulletin on the 14th, but I've kept those updated every every week since then as well. So watch those NISA's update bulletins. Thank you. Thank you, Cami. Um, and next up, we just wanted to leave you with a few resources. Um, so we do have our NCDPI PowerSchool user guide for end of year processing. Um, there haven't been any major changes in there, but there have been a few miscellaneous updates. Um, we do also still have our PowerSchool end of year processing video reference guide that we made last year. Uh, that is still good information and is out there for you. And we linked the quick reference document for updating the EOI contacts page just in case you haven't. Hopefully you've already done that. Um, but if not, certainly make sure you do that today, I, I would say. 
Um, and below that, we also have a link to the Nisus updates bulletin with Nisus end of year information. So I believe we are now ready to dive into some q and I know we've been trying to kind of stay on top of that as we've gone along. Um, I will say one that I've seen come in a lot is how will we log into PowerSchool on July 1st through NC EdCloud or through your direct PowerSchool link? So EOI contacts will log in through NC EdCloud. Um, other users won't be able to get in. Um, you know, if they click the PowerSchool button, it'll just say no. But if you are an EOI contact, you'll be able to hit that PowerSchool admin button in NC EdCloud. Um, and I see Tessa just answered one I think is worth pointing out. So someone asked, last year early grads with an exit code of W4 didn't transfer to the graduated school during EOI. Do we need to do anything on our end to ensure that transfers out this year? Um, and we are aware of that issue. Um, there was a little bug in a script last year um, that made that not work in some cases. Um, so we are keeping a close eye on that this year, and we should not have that issue recur. You don't need to do anything on your end for those. Um, and I see we had someone mention that they don't see the EOI button yet. Um, and that's correct. We won't unlock the EOI button until that morning of July 1st. Um, and here's one that, that just came in. I'll have to get Robert Justin probably to, to dive in on that one. Um, we still have 12th graders who are working on credit recovery. Do we have to approve the preliminary GDV before performing the commit process in Power Scheduler? Say that one more time, John. Um, so if they have 12th graders working on credit recovery, do they need to approve the preliminary GDV before they commit their schedules? No, I don't believe they need to do that. Thank you. Um, and I do want to throw out a, uh, a quick reminder too, um, that you should double check that you've set up your years and terms in your program schools below 300. Um, we found out that the EOI validation process doesn't check those program schools for next year, years and terms. Um, so please be sure that you have a, a current year term and a next year term at, at the very least in all of your program schools, even if you're a charter that's not using them. So this is the CCAS school, the homeless school, um, I think migrants in there, the DPI FTE school, graduated students, all of those under 300s. And we've had a few, are we sure that 7 a.m. is a go? In the past, it has been later. Um, so the webinar for EOI with PowerSchool, hosted by PowerSchool, will begin at 7 a.m. Um, and we hope to be able to give you the go ahead to hit the button right then. Um, but of course, we will we will give you that that official go ahead in that webinar. I believe uh, the next one I see under SQL reports, we are getting a warning with an invalid demotion demotion code for students transitioning from grade twelve to negative nine or XG. This was not a warning or fatal on the EPV one, um, and that is correct. This will not create any issues when you run EOI. Um, the SQL report, I believe, is a little bit older, and it's not aware that a 12 to negative 9 is valid. Um, it's just flagging any demotion is invalid. So you should be good if, if the only warnings are for those students going from 12 to XG. Next up, if we have a student that is a senior but is completing work, do we retain them and then promote to graduated after June 30th? Um, and I might have to get Rob and Justin on this one. I believe in that case, you would treat them as a summer graduate. Is that right? So they would get that summer promotion status after EOI. Say that one more time. Um, so they have a student who's a senior that needs to complete work. So at EOI, should they be retained and then promoted to graduated manually after June 30th? Yeah, I believe that you would follow whatever your local policy states. If they have not met the graduation requirement, whatever your local policy states they would need to be is what you would follow and then graduate them once all graduation requirements have been met. 
Um, and we have one. They hope this recording will be posted ASAP. Yes, uh, we will. We will try to get this out just as quickly as we can. Um, next up, I have two students in the homeless school. They have no next school indicator. Should there be one, or should I not have students in the homeless school? They do need to have a next school, regardless. I'm, I was going to say the EPV reports won't pick that up but your EOI validation process will. And they also asked when they push calendars from the LEA level, do they have to change the term to 2122? Um, and yes, I believe you would. If you want to push calendars for 2122, make sure that you are in that term before you do it. I believe you can do that before EOI, as long as you're in the right term. Um, next up for calendar setup, do we have to set up the entire calendar for next school year at each school or just the first and last day of school? Um, so for EOY, I believe you only need to have the years and terms in place. So that would be the first and last day of school. You can still work on entering the rest of the school calendar after EOY. Um, just needs to be done, of course, before school starts. Um, and be sure you're in the correct term if you are working with your next year school calendar. Uh, we have one in regards to the promote power teacher pro grade calculation formulas on page 13 of the EOI guide. Should this process be performed before the current school year ends? Um, that one I can answer. So I believe that the power teacher pro traditional grade calculation formulas, if you've set those up at the LEA office, I don't think that those are automatically copied during EOI. So if you want to reuse the same formulas, I would recommend copying them over before EOI or be prepared to recreate them after EOI. Um, but I'm pretty sure you've got to copy them before EOI if you want to reuse them next year. Don't know if anyone else on the team has a different answer to that, but. Uh, next up, do we know when the run UNC process automatically will resume? Um, they still are manually running that in graduation requirements. Yeah, I can explain that. The uh, What I learned this year, I think Rob and I both found this to be news to us. Um, that process, even though we call it a nightly process, it's really not ran every single night for every student. Um, it's a process that starts with seniors, um, and I'm just going to throw out random times. I, I know these times aren't true times, but for example, the seniors might kick off in your district at 11 p.m. at night, and that process will run until the early morning hours, like around 6 a.m., and then it's paused, and then it kicks off again the very next night, and it slowly goes through the seniors and then the juniors and then all the way down, um, and once it finishes, all of the students it's done. So it's truly not a nightly recalc of every student. It is important to note there as well. There is a new process that was put in place that most of the folks on this call as a CIS coordinator have the ability to go in and do a force calculation. You would have to leave your tab open. We put that out, I believe, about two weeks ago so that you don't have to wait for that process. If you select a group of children and you hit force calculate, it will force calculate at that moment in time. So please be reminded you don't have to wait for that process any longer and that you now have the ability to control that process as well. You can either queue it up to run overnight or you can do a force calculation that at that specific moment in time. It will calculate each kid one by one and if you close the tab, it will no longer, it will stop the calculation. So just make sure you are leaving that tab open. We believe that has been beneficial to you and we hope that you have found that to be positive for you. Thank you very much. I think that answers that one. Um, next up, if PowerSchool is returned to service on July 5th, can you ensure that all users remain locked out except for coordinators since that's a holiday for most PSUs? In prior years, all users' access was reinstated at the end of the EOI process. That one is a little tricky. Um, once we turn it over, we're going to turn it back over to everyone, and then it's going to be up to the coordinators to lock specific users out. And the only reason we have to do that is because we've got districts that are starting school, like July 6th or one, somewhere right in there. And, and so we can't pick and choose which districts to enable all or 
lock certain folks out. So once we run that script, it's going to turn it back on for everybody. So um, we'll send out a message so that you guys are prepared to to lock folks out if you need to. Perfect. Um, we have one about EPVs. They had a ticket in with PowerSchool to unlock their EPV1. Now that they're doing this anyway, when should we expect to see that get unlocked? That was tested yesterday. We had to run it through QA. Um, so I'm hoping that when we meet with PowerSchool today, they'll tell us that they can push that out either today or tonight. So by tomorrow, you should be able to run those reports again. Um, and we have a, a an updated comment about the the homeless school. Um, apparently, there's some documentation out there that says we need to transfer them out of the homeless school prior to EOY. Um, and I'm I'm thinking we may need to take that back and see if we're wrong or if the documentation's out of date. I don't know if anyone knows that off the top of their head. No, let's take that back. All right, we'll make sure we get you an answer, Kimberly, on homeless school. Um, and then sort of related to that, where would I enter the next school indicator for the homeless school? So if you do have active students in your homeless school that need a next school indicator, um, there's really two ways you could do it um, through the user interface. If you want to just select the next school on the schedule setup screen, you would have to go into school setup and set up the next school indicators for that school. Um, another trick is you could use student field value on those students to set their next underscore school field to be the school number of your homeless school. Um, and that would have the same effect. But we will double check that homeless school answer. You, you may not even have to do that. <laughs> Next up, we have already committed our schedule. The principal has now decided to add six week term courses. Um, she submitted a ticket to have the commit removed. Can I make changes to the current scenario and recommit? Um, so you're spot on in putting that ticket in. Um, it's it, it can be a little bit hairy to recommit, but I have seen power school support in the past be able to help people achieve that goal. Um, so I would definitely keep in contact with them and see what they say. Um, and hopefully they can get that worked out for you before EOY. Next up, um, if we have our staff locked out right now, will they stay locked out after EOY unless we unlock them? Um, and I believe that's correct. Our script is going to look at who's locked and unlocked right now, lock them all out if they're not contacts, and then revert it back to the way it was afterwards. So I'm thinking if you have your, you know, say teachers locked out right now, they would stay locked out after our scripts. Um, another comment on, on homeless, that this other person has never transferred out of homeless before EOI. So like I said, we'll, we'll take that back. Hey, John. Can you have the individual, or if you are listening, if you have the individual who said there's documentation out there that says to remove the homeless, can you put that documentation in the chat so we can see where that came from or email that to one of us, please? Mm, yes, that would be awesome. Thank you. I believe that was Kimberly. If you can pop that in for us or shoot it in an email, that would be great. And we will make sure we get the, the final correct answer to the homeless school issue for you guys. Oh, okay. Um, a, an, an interesting note from Mark um, that they spoke to Power School Support, and Raymond at Power School Support says that you can commit again now by just going through the commit process. In the past, you had to go in and manually delete the first commit, but now commit will overwrite the data. So. Hopefully that is the case. Um, if it were me, I think I'd, I'd wait to hear that straight from Power School Support, but that is what someone else heard from Power School Support. Um, and Kim is looking for that link for the, the homeless documentation for us. Um, and I see we got a, another comment from someone that in Power School community with Power School 12 and above, you can just recommit the schedule. 
So, like I said, ho hopefully it sounds like that is probably the case. Um, but I wouldn't blame you if you waited to to hear that from Power School support directly too. Um, certainly want to make sure that's correct. <laughs> Um, and I believe that is is everything I see so far. Um, let's see. Oh, here, here's another one just came in. When will we upgrade to the new version of PowerSchool? Um, I, I'm not sure if anyone wants to speak more to that. I believe we're still scheduled for first week in August. Is that correct? Um, upgrade testing is is getting close to complete, and I think we're still on track. Yeah, that's correct. That's our goal. Um, we have a request for a repeat on the answer about the Power Teacher Pro traditional grade calculation formulas at the LEA office. Um, so as far as I'm aware, those will not copy automatically through EOI. So if you want to use the same traditional grade calculation formulas next year, I would copy them now before EOI or be prepared to rebuild those um, in the new year. But I am relatively certain that they don't copy automatically and also that you have to copy them before EOI. Uh, let's see. I have 12th graders in an early college that are showing warnings for graduation dates because they have not graduated and they're coming back into grade 13. Do I have to do anything with that warning? Um, so I believe for your early college seniors going into their super senior year, they'd have a next year grade value of 13 and they should not have a diploma issued or granted date populated yet. Um, so I believe as, as long as those two date fields are blank and their next year grade is 13, you should be good to go. Um, we have one. When will new standard spreadsheets be posted? We are working on those um, and hope to get those out soon. I would say certainly before the end of July, um, provided everything goes well with those. But they are in process. And that is all we've got so far. So certainly if there's anything else, please feel free to toss that into the Q&A. And we just had a new one come in. They are setting up a new K-12 virtual school. Power School Support already created the school. PSU created years and terms, days, periods, put the calendar in there, set up the courses, set up the Power Teacher Pro traditional grade calculations. What else must I do before EOI for that new school? Um, I believe that is it, unless you are also committing a schedule. Um, and the only other thing I see is making sure your Power Teacher Pro traditional grade calculation formulas were made in the new year term and not the current year term, and they were copied over if you accidentally made them in the this year term. Um, but I think that's it if you're setting up a new school. Um, you won't have any active students in there yet, um, and you should be able to use that as a next school indicator for those students you know will go to that new school next year. And another one just came in. Since the EOI button is not yet there, will we have time to run a validation to see if everything is clear? Um, so yes, you can certainly run the validation um, end of your validation process anytime you know, now up until 5 p.m. on the 30th. Um, and then you can also run it the morning of the first once you're able to get back in um, i always myself used to run the validation one more time before i ran the real process that morning um, and we got an update from the the person about the homeless school withdrawal um, after reading it a little more carefully they think it may only be referring to non-school age siblings of students that have been withdrawn um, and she did provide us that link so we'll we'll double double check that, um, but that's kind of what it sounded like to me too. Um, once I got to that link, um, another one just came in. This one's good. This is my first year doing it, and I was wondering for the EOI process, do we have to be physically at our work locations to run that process? 
Um, your PSU may have their own policy around this, um, but just technically speaking, no. Um, you can, as long as you can log into PowerSchool, you can run that EOI process from anywhere. Um, I once ran mine from the R an RV in a Walmart parking lot. So, as long as you're in, you are good. And it looks like we are caught up with questions again. Um, we are certainly able to hang out here a little bit longer if anyone else has a question they'd like to pop in. If not, thank you for joining us. Um, I don't know if anyone else on the team has anything else to add. Um, but if not, we'll, we'll keep hanging out for just a little bit longer. And if you are good, thank you for coming. Like I said, I think we'll try to get this recording out just as quickly as we possibly can. Um, all right. Another question came in. It's not EOI related, but I think we can take it. Um, so for their new K-12 virtual school they just set up, in the beginning they were told not to do period attendance in a daily school because it would overstate absences on the PMR. PowerSchool says now that a school can be daily and also take attendance in each period. Does that work for North Carolina or not? Um, so at the end of the day on your PMR, you can only be one or the other daily or meeting. Um, you can take meeting attendance in a daily attendance school. Um, you just need to be very careful that your bridge period is set up correctly and that your attendance conversions are set up correctly. Um, there, there are a few little weird things that, that can, can kind of conflict, but generally speaking, it is possible. You just kind of have to be careful um, about what you said is the bridge period and also make sure that parents are aware of what you're doing. Um, because in the parent portal, they'll see the number of meeting absences and the number of daily absences both. So sometimes a parent will see the, the two different counts and be like, what's going on? I used to get that question a lot when I was in the field. Um, and Tessa's answer in, in text to that question is perfect. Um, just make sure that attendance is in your bridge period or you're going to have to reconcile every kid to get your PMR right. Um, we have another EOY one came in. I want to make sure the validations we're referring to are the EPV 1 and 2. Um, so yes and no. Um, the EPV reports are out there to help you with validations, um, but there is also the end-of-year validation process you can run, and I believe we had a screenshot of that on the slide, didn't we? Let me go back a little bit. Yes, here we go. Um, so to run your end of year validation process, this is sort of the core power school validation. Um, you'll go to system setup at the LEA office and on the system setup page, you should have this end of year process link. So you'll click that and then all the way down at the bottom of that screen, you'll have two options um, to perform EOI validation. Um, on the real EOI day, you'll have a third option here that says run EOI and promote students, um, but we won't unlock that option until the morning of July 1st. Um, but right now you can go in, hit end of your process, and perform the EOI validation, and this will run PowerSchool through that process just to make sure everything is ready. Um, so the EPV reports kind of will tell you the same thing. Um, but I would recommend running this validation as well, just to be doubly sure that everything is good to go. Um, and we had a request for a repeat of what information needs to be entered in PowerSchool for a new school prior to EOI. So for a brand new school, um, you would need your years of years and terms um, for sure. You could set up the school calendar before or after as long as you have the start date and end date set up in your years and terms. And I think years and terms is really the key. Um, if you were using Power Scheduler for that new school, you'll also want to be sure you commit the schedule before EOI. 
Um, but otherwise, I think that's all you really need need um, for a new school prior to EOY. Um, and I'll also say you'll probably want to get that calendar set up as soon as possible, just because that flows to other systems like ECATS. So if you can have that calendar set up before EOY, awesome. Um, but if not, certainly before school starts and as soon as you're able. Um, here's another new K-12 school question, not an EOI question, but we can take it. Can we have more than one FTE in a new school? Sometimes, yes. Um, there are occasions where you may need another FTE to describe, like, some EC students who may not be attending a full day. Um, generally, for simplicity's sake, we would advise you only have one. Um, but there are some scenarios where you just really have to have more than one. Um, but usually, if it's more than one, those are going to be students with IEPs that require it. Uh, and just a note on those EPV reports. Um, the EPV reports aren't looking at pre-enrolled students, um, whereas that EOI validation process I showed you does. Um, so again, just a, a good idea to look at both. And thank you, Tessa, great point on the multiple FTEs question. Your additional FTEs you need to get approved by our financial business services folks. So that that's not typically a thing we suggest, but there, there are some one-off scenarios. And we are caught back up with questions again. Um, I believe we are scheduled in here till 11, so I'm... Happy to hang out, um, but again, if you are good and you're feeling all right, then you are certainly welcome to go. Thank you for joining us this morning. Uh, we had a new one just come in from someone who was a little bit late. Um, do we have the date for summer withdrawals after EOI? And I believe we're sticking with 7-6. Is that right? Anybody else? I am good with the date. I don't believe anyone's in school then. Um, we have one from someone new. They're new in their position, first time running EOY. They just ran their validation. Um, and what they got back was validation complete, but you didn't select perform EOY, so it will not continue. So if you get validation complete, that means there were no errors. So you should be good to go, Valerie. Um, next week, as long as, you know, nothing changes between now and then. It is important to remember, even though it says validation complete today to run it every day to make sure nothing has changed. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah, that's a good point. We need to send out a reminder because a lot of new folks think that if they do that the day before and it says complete, they don't have to do anything. Um, and I see someone, someone pointed out our EOY guide says seven one. For those summer withdrawals. So my apologies. Seven one for your summer no show date. It's I don't think it's gonna be the end of the world if you use seven six, but my apologies. Seven one we're going with. Um and then we have just a confirmation question on July first, EOI contacts log into IAM, click PowerSchool admin like usual, then system end of year process. That is correct, um, and they're asking if we need the EOI contact username. So there is a field on the EOI contact screen that says EOI contact username. That field needs to be filled out with your PowerSchool username um, that you will find on the security settings page and then admin access and roles tab. Um, so that's your username within PowerSchool, and that's what our script is going to look for to unlock you. But as far as logging in, you will just use IAM. So you don't necessarily need to memorize that PowerSchool username, but you do need to make sure that that's the username you put in on the EOI contacts page. Hopefully that makes sense. And I think that, that that process is covered pretty well in our video about how to find that username and then get it into the EOY contacts page. 
So I would encourage you to, to check out that video um, if you're unsure or you want to double check that you got the right username in there. Um, but that's like the, the first thing we go through in the video. So. so we are caught back up with questions with a minute and a half to go. So certainly if you have any last minute thoughts or, or questions that popped up, please feel free to pop them in. Um, otherwise, we will end this meeting in exactly one minute now. Um, and thank you again for joining us. And thank you in advance for a great end of year processing day next week. Uh, we had one come, question come in from someone just a little bit late. What is the EOI date? So the power school will go down June 30th at 5 p.m. We'll lock everybody out. Let me crank back to that slide for you. So June 30th, 5 p.m. system goes down. July 1st, early morning, we will unlock it for our EOI contacts. And then also July 1st at 7 a.m., the EOI webinar will begin. All EOI contacts will receive an invitation to that webinar by Friday of this week. Um, if you haven't gotten it by then, please reach out so we can make sure you get it. Um, and once you join that webinar, we hopefully will be in there saying, do it, go. Um, but we will let you know for sure in that webinar that morning when everyone is clear to start hitting the button. Hopefully that covers it. And we are now at 11 o'clock. So I believe we're good to go ahead and end this meeting. Like I said, we'll try to get this recording out just as quickly as we possibly can. Um, if anything should come up, please feel free to reach out to Power School Support or to our team, home underscore base at dpi.nc.gov. And we will make sure you get the info you need. Thanks again for joining us, and we will see you on the first in the EOI webinar. Thanks, everyone. Thank you.